So uh, we're here, RFM, Nick Priest, with Gautar Darmoni. Am I saying that right? Yes. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm myself half Middle Eastern as well, <laughs> so I recognize some of the things that you were uh, what did you recognize? saying. The whole, uh, this macho, this being macho, <laughs> that thing. <laughs> but I have to say, it was a very extremely entertaining uh, speech. It was, you brought it really well, and uh, I think it changed a lot of people's opinions mm -hmm. on uh, desexualization, know. Uh, you know. But uh, could you tell us briefly, first of all, what is erotic capital, briefly? Erotic capital is actually everything which has to do with physical qualities and then it's seen as an extra assessed when it's used in a proper way with feminine or masculine capital which can enhance our uh, career, for example, on the working situation. And it's also seen, especially in a uh, mediatized, visualized culture, it's getting more and more important. Yes, yeah, so that's what I want to ask you as well, like, uh, because I wrote down, you said uh, that... Uh, society is changing, you know, the sphere of, uh, you know, models are being sexualized more as well in Cosmopolitan magazine is said uh, yes, such the, names. The culture of pornification. Yes, that. How is, uh, you know, the commercial sphere of uh, sexualizing the female body actually changing the way we look at uh, gender uh, equality? It's, it's cutting women especially, but also men, but in this situation women from, from, from their own body because the, the, the female body is so much into that pornification culture that women associate their femininity with that uh, abuse that we see in the visual media yeah. so there is a like a disconnection and then women don't even dare to enjoy their bodies or to enjoy the knowledge and the wisdom of the body in, in, in a labor market because it's immediately associated and there is a fear that it could be associated to that aspect so actually it create it's creating more and more dissociation with the with the, with the body, it's 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 putting women and men uh, away from each other because women are getting more and more into this objectification, and then men more and more into observing this object. Yeah. So it's it's creating uh, the, 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 the 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 space between the men and women is getting bigger and bigger, especially when it comes to the body culture. Yeah. Okay, that's clear. Uh, you said that uh, also uh, good-looking people, there was a research that good-looking people tend to earn more yes. than plain-looking people. Yes. So, what, you know, in, in, in that sense, you know, you linked it to the seven stages of erotic capital. So, w what exactly are the seven stages of erotic capital? Hello. There are different stages like beauty. So, beauty, not necessarily like to be beautiful, but like to take good care of yourself. There is the sex, sex appeal, there is the charisma, there is the social uh, presentation. But it's all these as aspects where people take good care of how they look. Because this self care is also obviously something which uh, plays a positive role into self-confidence. When we look good, we are more self-confident, we, we, we enjoy our bodies, we are more happy, so we sell ourselves in a better way and in a more positive way. The only thing is that we have to be aware to not get trapped into this external importance that it's not only that I need to look good, but it's important that I look good and I feel good. But yes, and that's how it translates into your personality in the work floor and in business as well, I yes, think. Yes, it's looking good and feeling good. Great. <laughs> okay, how did you enjoy the night? It was wonderful, and I think it's great that Nain Roda um, Business University is organizing this. I always thought Nain Roda is one of the most progressive universities in Europe about... Um, business. They were amongst the first ones who started uh, years ago about uh, business and spirituality. Everybody was like, what is this? So I really, I really loved being here and being part of this community and I think it's wonderful what they do. Okay, and uh, do you have any upcoming projects? That's I have a lot, lot, a lot yeah. of upcoming projects. Can you tell us a little bit? It's, I, I finally started working more with men because my, my son complained three years ago that I'm only working with feminine capital and not enough with masculine capital. He was seven years old in that time. And I promised him that from now on, I will give men more and more space in my work. So from now on, and today at Nairobi Business University, it's one step towards that direction. It's about men. Emancipation is also about men, not only about women. That men also need to have space into this uh, equity, not always as the so-called the bad ones, but also as the potential ones, as the allies of women for this uh, female equity. So, as men, we sh shouldn't feel attacked. Just 
we help in the changing of the perception of the females yes, together, in, in, in together. Yeah. We, we are in the same system we are in the, just we are in different roles and let's put our hands together let's have some fun and let's change it from inside out that's great yeah this was uh, Kauthar Darmoni uh, with the RFM thank you very much yes. Yes.